represent a new generation of African leaders. This is the chair of the Nobel Committee, and she's talking about this man. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Who's about to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. Ethiopia's new leader had ended a decades-long war with the neighboring country Eritrea. But less than a year later, Ethiopia was attacking one of its own regions, the regional state of Tigray, and had called on Eritrea, its new ally, to attack from the north. In just a few months, the country's leader had gone from this War is the epitome of fail for all involved. To this. The federal government had every right to deploy federal security forces. Ethiopia is now at war with itself. The conflict there has already killed thousands of fighters and civilians and forced more than 60,000 Ethiopians to seek refuge over the border in Sudan. Ethiopia seemed like it was on the brink of peace. How did it fall into a civil war so quickly? Eritrean forces have also invaded and taken over territory. Thousands have been displaced or killed. Abe Ahmed is not the first leader to bring Ethiopia to war. What sets him apart is that he promised peace. The problem is that Abe's vision of a unified Ethiopia didn't include everyone. And that's one way he's not so different from his predecessors. The country today is extremely polarized. Social divisions are particularly deep and intense. It's difficult to see how Ethiopians can persuade the to continue to pledge allegiance to